right. All right, would the court reporter please swear the witness? If you would raise your right hand for me, please. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in this matter pending before us on the 18th of August, 2020? I do. Do you have your witnesses sworn? All right, thank you. State your name for the record, please, sir. Matthew Joseph Bates. Where do you live? Uh, in Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania. Is that where you are today as we're taking this deposition? Correct. Uh, who is your employer? Evans Delivery Company. Um, and so when you go into work, where do you go? Are you asking me the town? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's two words. I'll spell the first word. First word is Schuylkill. It's S-C-H-U-Y-L-K-I-L-L. Second word's Haven. That's Pennsylvania. We're having a little trouble hearing you. I don't know if it's a microphone issue on your end or what. All right, here, let me, let me try to lean in. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you better now. You said Schuylkill, Haven, Pennsylvania, I think. Correct. And is that the corporate headquarters for the Evans Network of Companies? Correct. Is it also the uh, corporate headquarters of Evans Delivery Company? Correct. You work for both companies, I think. Is that correct? Uh, Evans. What do you mean both companies? The Evans Network of Companies and Evans Delivery Company. Uh, the Evans Network is just a marketing uh, moniker. It's not a company. What is the name of the entity that owns the Evans Delivery Company and Allegiant and Polaris and all those other brands that are associated with the Evans Network of Company? Well, Allegiant and Polaris, to your point, are brands. They aren't companies, and those brands are owned and operated by Evans. Uh, Evans is owned by a holding company called, I think it's ENC Acquire Corporation. Are you an employee of any company other than Evans Delivery Company? No. What is your position at Evans Delivery Company? I'm Vice President of Risk. Is that risk management and safety? At one point in time it was, but it no longer is. All right. Um, if you are not in charge of safety anymore, who is? Uh, my safety duties uh, are currently being transitioned to an individual named Tom Burke. When did that transition start? Uh, Tom was hired shortly before the COVID outbreak, so earlier this year. Earlier in 2020? Correct. Um, you're aware that today Evans Delivery Company has chosen you to speak on its behalf in this deposition, correct? I am. I will show you now um, what has been marked as plaintiff's exhibit number 40. Oh, excuse me, I gotta pull it back up. Do you see exhibit 40 on the screen? I do. Um, that appears to be the notice of deposition for this deposition, correct? It does. A notice of deposition is the document that officially said we'd be taking your deposition today, right? I believe that's correct. Um, I presume you've reviewed uh, Plaintiff Exhibit 40 before this deposition, is that correct? It is. And Plaintiff Exhibit 40, the notice provides a list of some of the topics uh, we might ask you about today. Is that correct? Yes. In addition to being the uh, director of risk, you're also a lawyer, aren't you? I am. You went to law school at Duquesne University School of Law, I believe. Duquesne, but correct. Okay. Um, have you given depositions before? I have. How many times? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. Like five or like 50 or like 500? Certainly not 500. Certainly more than five. Uh, I don't know whether it's less or more than 50. I would venture to guess less. Okay. Um, have 
most of those depositions been in connection with your work with the Evans Delivery Company? Correct. Uh, have most of them involved collisions in which someone was alleging injuries and an Evans truck was involved? The majority have been auto liability, but there have been other matters. When you speak about auto liability, that's, that refers to a case in which uh, someone is alleging injuries and an Evans truck was involved. Is that correct? Correct. I'd like to get some background from you about um, Evans generally, I, I guess, including that marketing name, the Evans network of companies. Tell me, can you now see Plaintiff's Exhibit 41 on the screen in front of you? I can. On the left there, we see the logo that says the Evans Network of Companies, right? Correct. And did you just tell me, if I, if I heard you right, that's not a real company, that's just a, a marketing brand or marketing entity? It's not an entity, it's a marketing effort, correct. You, a marketing what? Effort. A marketing effort. Okay. Well, anyway, do you recognize Plaintiff's Exhibit 41 here as the About Us page for the Evans Network of Companies? Generally, yes. All right. If we go, I guess, to the bottom of the first page, we can see a URL here, and that would be consistent with this being the, the About page for the Evans Network of Companies, right? Correct. Now... We've established that the Evans Delivery Company is a part of the Evans Network of Companies, right? Correct. How big is the Evans Network of Companies? Uh, I'm not certain how you want me to measure it. All right, well, how many states does it operate in? Well, we're a trucking company, and most trucking companies um, operate in all 48 states, contiguous states, and we're, we, being a trucking company, we fit that description. I mean, isn't it true that the Evans Network of company ha Companies has like 600 service locations? Uh, I would not use that number, but I would use the number in the hundreds, correct. Well, let's scroll down a little bit and play it at 41, and we'll come to, this is the top of what, was paginated as page two. Um, you see the highlighted language in front of you there? I do. That says, quote, the network includes 600 service center locations, more than 6,000 trucks, and revenues in excess of $1.2 billion in quote. Is that correct? You read that right. Um, do you have any reason to disagree with this language from uh, the Evans webpage? Uh, I wouldn't have used the 600 service center locations. I know why it's being used, but I would not have used that description. Huh. Well, anyway, if we scroll on down, we can see some of the, the brands associated with the marketing network, no, uh, effort known as Evans Network of Companies, right? Correct. And uh, among these brands, we see Evans Delivery Company, your employer, right? Correct. And we also see Allegiant Intermodal, which was also on the side of Paul Reed's truck, correct? Correct. And if we keep coming down, we come to a list of the um, senior management team. If we look here, it's got you listed as the vice president of safety and risk management, right? Right. We also see a C. Ryan Bates. Um, is that your brother? Correct. We see a Matthew Bo Bates listed as the president and CEO. Is that your father? Correct. My understanding is that Albert Burt Evans, the chairman of the board and son of the founder, is, I think, your father's father-in-law. Is that right? Correct. And then my understanding is that the founder of the company was your great-grandfather. Is that right? Correct. So who, at the time this collision occurred on October 1, 2019, 
who was the highest ranking safety officer in the Evans network of companies? Me. Um, and how many people were you managing at that time? Uh, I had three direct reports. The team in total though was somewhere between uh, 50 and 60 employees, but I, I only had three direct reports. Who did you report to? In other words, who is your boss or supervisor? Bo Bates. As I understand, you graduated from college in 2005. Is that right? It is. Finished law school in 2008. Correct. Uh, you worked as a lawyer at a law firm from 2008 to 2012, I think. Is that right? It is. And then you started to work at Evans as a staff attorney in 2012. Correct. Uh, three years later, you were promoted to the vice president of risk management and safety, reporting directly to the CEO who was your father. Is that right? Correct. Have you ever been a truck driver? I have not. Well, Evans has uh, um, however many locations it has. It has a bunch of locations in Georgia. Isn't that correct? We have locations in Georgia, correct. Uh, I will show you. Where, do you know how many? I could make a guess, but offhand, I don't know a specific number now. Well, I think. Can you see now what I've marked as plans exhibit number 42? I can. It says service center locator, uh, doesn't it? It does. Has the Evans um, delivery company logo on it? Correct. Right, if we look down, I guess I'll have to represent to you that before making this printout, I selected Georgia. If we look down, we can see a whole bunch of locations of the Evans delivery company or Evans network of companies in Georgia. Does that appear to be correct? Correct. If we look at the um, URL that prints here on the bottom of each page in Plans Exhibit 42, we can see a URL that at least is consistent with this being a Evans delivery web page, right? Correct. Now, I've gone through and counted all of these. Um, you can tell they occur over 14 pages. I count 47 locations in Georgia. Does that sound right to you, or would you prefer to count? Uh, I trust your counting ability. All right. Well, I also pulled pictures of a few of these locations just so we could get a feel for what they are. Um, have you ever visited Evans's location in Savannah, Georgia? I have. All right, well, do you, do you see plans exhibit 43 in front of you? I do. Do you recognize it? Um, that looks like the yard, although I don't see the office space, so I'm not entirely sure, but I, I do see the banner there, which leads me to believe it is the yard. All right, and then if, if we look up at the top here, we can see the Google Maps URL, correct? Correct. You see the address here, 503 Bourne Avenue, correct? Correct. And that's also an address that we see on Plans Exhibit 42 um, on page two, correct? Correct. Have you ever visited the Evans location in Palmetto, Georgia? I have not visited that one, no. Well, do you see Plans Exhibit 44 on the screen in front of you? I do. Does that look like a Google Street View image? I assume so. Okay. Um, do you see the placard there for Polaris Intermodal? I do. That's an Evans brand, isn't it? It is. And if we look on the left here under the Google URL, we see the uh, address of 8409 Tatum Road, correct? You read that correctly. If we go back to the plans of exhibit um, 42 and go down to page seven, we find, well, there we go, on page nine, excuse me, we find that same 8409 Tatum Road address, correct? You read that correctly. Okay. 
is that consistent with your knowledge that um, Evans does in fact have a, uh, a location in Palmetto, Georgia? Uh, I don't know specifically whether it's in Palmetto. Uh, I know that there's a location in Georgia. I don't know the exact city. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to talk with you next about the uh, collision that this case is about. But before I get too deep into it, I wanted to make sure I was correct in my understanding of where your company, Evans, stands on all this stuff. Um, so let me show you now what I've marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 7. Do you see that on the screen in front of you? I do. Okay. Plaintiff's Exhibit 7 is a court pleading, right? Uh, I don't consider discovery pleading, but... Well, anyway, maybe. the name of the court and then the name of the case on it, right? Correct. That, that's a caption, correct. All right. And do you see where it says, Defendant Evans Delivery Company's responses and objections to plaintiff's first request for admission? I do. You know how requests for admission work, don't you? I do. Basically, one party makes a statement. In this case, plaintiff makes a statement, and then Evans can either admit it or deny it or say they don't know, right? They can respond, correct. Okay, well, let's look at some of the um, requests for admissions and responses. And the ones I want to look at are the first two here. Number one says Paul Reed was at fault for the collision on October 1, 2019, correct? You read that correctly. And Evans' response was denied, correct? You read that correctly. Request for admission number two says Paul Reed was partially at fault for the collision on October 1, 2019, right? You read that correctly. And Evans' response was denied, right? You read that correctly. Do you stand by those responses today? We do. All right. Well, who had the right of way? Subject to form. You can answer subject to the objection. Uh, I'm not certain of the specific law in Georgia of who had the right of way. Well, have you looked into this collision? I have. Your company's investigated it, right? Uh, we've performed investigation, correct. Do you think it's important to know who got the right of what? Uh, that was not a detail that was important to me during my investigation. Well, let's talk about it now and see what we can figure out. The collision occurred on Temple Avenue, which is also known as Georgia Highway 16 and alternate U.S. Highway 27, correct? Uh, I'm not certain about the alternate names of the roadway. Okay, well, let's look at um, look at an exhibit here. I'll show you now what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 12. Do you see that? I see it. All right, it, then it's labeled Google Earth Overview, right? Correct. Yeah, you probably pulled this collision site up on Google Earth yourself, hadn't you? I did. Does this look familiar? It does. Okay, so it says Temple Avenue, right? Correct. And then here it says 16, and here it says 27, correct? It does. Okay. Now, we know that in this collision, Mr. Jordan and his pickup truck was heading north, and Mr. Reed and the tractor trailer was backing into his driveway, correct? That's my understanding, yes. Now, if someone's going straight in a main traffic lane and another person is backing across that lane, who do you think has the right of way? Object to the form. I still don't know the Georgia law. Okay. Well, let me show you um, another question before we get to talking about the law, another exhibit. 
Do you see Plaintiff's Exhibit 1 on the screen in front of you? I do. Now, I'm not going to ask you to say this is correct, because I, I don't think you've seen it before. Um, so I want to ask you to vouch for it. But I do want to ask you this. Looking just at that picture, as between these two vehicles, is it your testimony that you don't know who would have the right of way? Object to form. It's my testimony that I don't know the Georgia law. Okay. Well, let's take a look at um, plaintiff's exhibit number 12. I'll tell you what, let's look at plaintiff's exhibit 13. Do you see 13 on the screen in front of you? I do. That appears to just be a zoomed in version of the Google Maps image that was plaintiff's exhibit 12, right? It does. Let's think about it this way. Pretend that um, Mr. Jordan was going straight as he was in real life and a tractor trailer was making a left turn in front of him across his lane. So basically this is just like the real case except the tractor trailer in, in this hypothetical is making a left turn going forward instead of backing up. But if one person is going straight and another person is turning across that lane, who has the right of way? Object to form. I don't know the Georgia law. Okay. Who would have the right of way where you live? Same objection. Um, I, 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 the question asked me to assume a whole bunch of facts to be true. Um, so the person that making a left-hand turn could have the right of way in the event that his sight line doesn't identify any vehicles. So I just, I have a hard time answering the question because it asked me to assume a lot of facts is true. You do have a driver's license, right? I do. Okay. Well, one way to figure this out might be to ask, um, to look at who got the ticket, right? I, I'm not certain of that, no. Well, do you know who got the, the, tific, the ticket or the traffic citation? In this collision? I'm aware that Mr. Reed was cited. Okay, do you know what he was cited for? I do not. Um, do you think that's important? I think the police report tells us that. Tells us what? What he was cited with. All right, well, that's right. Let's take a look. You see plans is 55 on the screen ahead of you. I do. All right. And this first is a first page of fax cover. Does page two appear to begin the police report that you have used in connection with this case? It appears so, yes. It's got Paul Reed's name, Oliver Jordan's name, and the date of the collision, right? Correct. If we scroll down here, under Reed's column, we can see he's got two citations here, right? That's what I see, yes. Okay. Let's take a closer look um, at some of that. I will show you the official court disposition. Do you see plan exhibit two on the screen ahead of you now? I do. Um, this says uniform traffic citation summons and accusation, right? You read that correctly? It has the date of the collision, Paul Reed's name, and improper backing with the code section written down there, doesn't it? You read that correctly. And if we scroll down to the next page, we'll see the check mark here that shows that Mr. Reed forfeited his bond. Do you see that? I do. Forfeiting bonds the same as admitting guilt, isn't it? Objective form. I don't know the Georgia law. Okay. Well, um, so anyway, we've established now that uh, Mr. Reed received a citation for improper backing, correct? Correct. Let's look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 3. Do you see that? I do. This is another traffic citation form, right? Uh, correct. This has the date of the collision, Paul Reed's name, and improper stopping along with a code section, correct? Correct. 
If we scroll down to the second page of Planning Exhibit 3, we'll see that he forfeited bond here too, right? You read that correctly? Um, now, Mr. Jordan did not receive a ticket or citation in this collision, did he? Not to my knowledge. Now, we said, um, I think in the connection with the right of way, I believe you said you weren't familiar with Georgia law. Is it related to rights of way? Do I remember that right? Correct. A Georgia police officer ought to know that, though, wouldn't you think? I check the form. I don't know what the Georgia police officer does or doesn't know. Do you think a Georgia police officer would be familiar with Georgia traffic law? Object to form. Uh, I can make assumptions, but I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't mean to. Um, oh, Lord, I've lost my notes. Cause offense or beat a dead horse. But do you see that first page of Plans Exhibit 7? on the screen ahead of you now? I do. Do you still stand by those two responses denying fault or partial fault for this collision? I agree that we are responsible for the actions of Mr. Reed, but in this instance, I don't believe that Mr. Reed's actions caused this accident. So yes, I stand beside the responses that were provided to the request for admission. Your microphone was cutting out again at the beginning of that answer. Can you say that once more? Sure. I said, I think I said uh, that I agree that we are responsible for the actions of Mr. Reed. But in this particular instance, we don't believe that Mr. Reed's actions caused this accident. So, yes, we stand behind our answers to the request for admission. Did you listen to the... Um... 911 recordings in this case? Um, I listened to uh, Mr. Reed's. I'm under the impression there are others, and I did not listen to those. Why not? Um, we're getting into attorney client privilege. No, no. Why didn't you listen to the recording? We're getting into attorney client privilege. Are you going to refuse to answer that? I am instructing him not to answer anything he learned based on his communications with counsel. If he has information outside of those communications, uh, of course, he can respond. Ms. Adair, are you instructing Mr. Bates not to answer that question? I'm instructing him not to answer questions that are based on information he knows solely from communications with his counsel, yes. Well, my question is real clear, and if someone is just going to tell me outright they refuse to answer, then we can move on. But the question is, why didn't you listen to the other 911 recording? And my objection and instructions to him are the same. If there is information outside of our communications that is responsive, he can answer. Otherwise, I'm instructing him not to answer. So are you, are you instructing not to answer, or are you not? Chad, I was very clear. No, if he has information that he knows outside of our own communications, he is free to give that. If, however, the only information that he has derived from our attorney-client communications, I'm instructing him not to answer. Are you going to answer, Mr. Banks? In order for me to answer, I have to reveal, um, I even feel uncomfortable answering it because it's hard to answer it without revealing things that were discussed. So I can't answer it. All right, well, I can't make you, so we will move on. Let's take a listen. Um, I think I need to share my screen in order to do this, and we'll do that even though it's just an audio recording. I will play this for you now. Um, let me know if you cannot hear it. Maybe a truck or a sedan. I can't really see. 
recording were you able to hear the screeching tires I was not did you hear her say oh god I did not were you able to hear the recording generally yes but it was somewhat garbled given our talking to each other remote okay well, I will ask you to assume that in that recording, which will mark as Planet Exhibit 6, this deposition, you can hear some high-pitched screeching consistent with the screeching of tires, and, she's, and then the caller says, oh, God. And then the 911 operator asks what it was, and the caller says that someone else almost hit the tractor trailer. Now, would it seem significant to you that even after Mr. Jordan had struck this tractor trailer and the taillights of his pickup truck were visible sticking out from underneath the trailer, another vehicle still almost hit it? Object to form. I have no way to answer that. Well, you've been a part of the investigation and analysis of this collision, right? Correct. And you knew you were going to be given a deposition on this topic today, right? Correct. In fact, one of your noticed topics was how the subject collision occurred, right? Correct. Okay. Well, would it seem important to you that even after Mr. Jordan had crashed into this trailer and the taillights from his pickup truck were sticking out from underneath it, another driver still almost hit it? Object to form. I have no idea if the other driver was eating a sandwich, whether that other driver was on a cell phone, whether that other driver was in an argument with a passenger. I have no idea of the circumstances you're asking me to comment upon, which is why I can't comment upon them. Doesn't it at least suggest that that trailer was hard to see? Object to form. I, I refer back to my answer that I just gave. I just, I have no idea of the attentiveness or the circumstances surrounding the other driver um, who apparently um, was nearby at the time of this accident. Well, let's back up a little bit. Don't you think it's dangerous to back a tractor trailer across a five lane highway like this? Objective one. I don't think he backed across five lanes um, so I, I don't think that that question is a, a is a fair question. Um, but that aside, um, I don't think that the backing in all circumstances is unsafe. I think it's a facts and circumstances type question. Well, how many lanes do you think the tractor trailer block? Uh, it's my understanding that this particular roadway has two. Uh, lanes of travel in each direction with a center lane that's intended to be a turn lane for either the uh, north or southbound lanes and that Mr. Reed was in that travel or excuse me that turn lane attempting to back over the two northbound lanes. So he was blocking three lanes then at least. Correct. Don't you think it's dangerous to back a truck and trailer across three lanes of the U.S. Highway? Objective form. I think that it's a facts and circumstances uh, analysis, and I think that in order for him to enter or exit his property, he either, either needs to back in or back out. Well, we'll get to the some alternatives, I guess, in a minute. But do you think it's more, if you're going to back a tractor trailer across at least three lanes of the U.S. Highway. Do you think it's more or less dangerous to do that at night? Object to form. I don't know how to answer that um, because um, 
there are reasons that you might want to do it at night versus the day because there's less traffic at night during the day. So I just, I don't know how to answer your question. You reckon the trailer is harder to see at night or in the day? Objective one. I don't know any of the instances of the conspicuity in this particular case. Well, no, sir, my question was, do you reckon it's harder to see a trailer at night or in the day? Same objection. Yeah, I, I don't know that, um, given the fact that there's headlights involved, taillights involved, uh, conspicuity tape involved, so I just, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. If you're going to back a tractor trailer across at least three lanes of a U.S. highway at night, do you think it's more dangerous or less dangerous to do it without reflective triangles or a flagger? Objective form. Um, I've not been made aware of instances where vehicles that aren't disabled or aren't overdimensional utilize triangles or flaggers when backing. Well, thank you. Uh, that wasn't quite my question. My question was, do you think it's more dangerous or less dangerous to do it without triangles or a flagger? That's same objection. Well, I think my answer pointed out that your question assumes things that aren't customarily done, but for vehicles being disabled or having overdimensional loads. Um, but in the event we assume things that don't happen at, within the industry, that could make things safer. Now, I said we'd get back to um, the alternatives for parking. So let's do that. Do you see Plaintiff's Exhibit number 10 on the screen in front of you? Uh, I still see the, um, I don't know what to call it, but the, there you go. Now you're getting off of it. How about now? Do you see Plaintiff's Exhibit 10? Now I do. All right. Um, I'll represent to you that Plaintiff's Exhibit 10 is a picture of the house where Paul Reed pack, uh, parked the truck and trailer. And if that's true, don't you think that he could have, if necessarily necessary, parked the truck crossways in his yard and moved it later? Objective one. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Don't you think that, um, was there any reason it was impossible for him to put out reflective triangles or even flares? Same objection. Uh, if your question is, was it impossible, the answer is no. Uh, was it impossible for him, or could he have called a flagger to the scene if he'd chosen to do that? It's unreasonable, but it's possible. Any reason why he couldn't have done that? Um, getting back to what I said earlier, flaggers are utilized in the event that a vehicle is disabled or in the event the load is overdimensional. So it, is it possible? Yes, but it's unreasonable. Okay. Um, now, we talked about the Evans Delivery Yard in Palmetto, right? Correct. You know where Palmetto is? Offhand, I don't. Well, I'll represent to you, it's not all that far from Noonan. You know, Noonan's where this collision happened, right? I'm sorry, Jeff, can you repeat that question? I couldn't hear it. Um, I'll, I'll rephrase it. I think it was not a very oh, question. Oh, I, I just couldn't hear. Oh, can you hear me better now? Yeah. All right. Were you aware that Palmetto, Georgia, is not very far from Noonan, Georgia? Objective one. I don't know the geography. Okay. Well, let me show you um, what we've marked as plaintiff's exhibit 44. And this is one we've seen before. Do you see that um, uh, the picture of the Evans location, Palmetto branded Polaris Intermodal? I do. 
do you now see players exhibit 45? I do. Your questions misunderstand our corporate structure, but I see it. All right. Do you see the URL there that suggests it's a Google, Google Maps image? I see the URL. See that same address, 8409 Tatum Road? I do. Um, do you see this lot underneath the pen that says 8409 Tatum Road? I see the image. There's plenty of room to park a truck or a trailer there, isn't there? Not for Mr. Reed. Are you, is it your testimony that Mr. Reed's trailer would not have fit here? It's my testimony that he's not permitted to park there. Well, if the choice was to back his trailer across that U.S. highway at night or park here, are you saying Evans would not have allowed him to park in the spot that's shown in Plans Exhibit 45? Object form. What I'm saying is that the yard that we're looking at right now is not owned by Evans and it is not leased by Evans. Um, it is leased or owned by someone who's a partner to Evans who runs under our Polaris brand. And that yard is therefore made available to trucks who run under the, under the Polaris brand and customers who tender freight to the Polaris brand. And that Mr. Reed drove for our Allegiant brand. Um, so when I said that that yard is not available to Mr. Reed, it's because Mr. Reed was not driving for dispatch by or moving freight for this particular location. Let's go back to Plans Exhibit 42. Well, that's not what I wanted. Excuse me. I want 41. You see Plans Exhibit 41 on the screen in front of you? I do. Remember this is the Evans Network of Companies About Us page. I do. If we scroll down to, it looks like it's going to be the third page of um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 41. Let's see here. Do we see the Polaris intermodal logo there? I do. Did anybody call and ask if Reed could park there? I don't know the answer to that question, but your question again misunderstands our corporate structure. This sign here that I've just highlighted on the third page of Plans Exhibit 41, that's the same sign as we see on uh, the fence here in Plans Exhibit 44, isn't it? I own the name, I shouldn't say I, Evans owns the name, Evans owns the artwork. Evans does not own the yard, Evans does not lease the yard. Is it the same logo or not? I own the name, Evans owns the name, and Evans owns the artwork. I think I asked if it was the same logo or not. And I think I gave an answer. Was the answer yes? It was not yes. It was Evans owns the name and Evans owns the artwork. I was not be, being very clear. My question was whether this highlighted logo here on the third page of Plain Exhibit 41 that says Polaris Intermodal is the same logo as the one hanging on the fence here in Plain Exhibit 44. Is it the same logo? Right, they're the same because I own the art, Evans owns the artwork and Evans owns the name. But that is all it owns. Let's go off video for a minute and then we'll get my uh, exhibits organized a little better and that should steam this toward conclusion. I don't think we'll be here a whole lot longer. All right, we're off video at 2.46 p.m. I guess you could see me fiddle around. I forgot to turn my little video off. All your secrets are exposed. <laughs> Don't tell anybody how bare the cover is. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go back on video. All right. Back on video, 249 p.m. Uh, isn't it true, Mr. Bates, that Evans knew 
that Reed was regularly backing the tractor trailer across this highway? No, that's not true. Well, have you been to the scene of the collision? No. You looked at photos of it though, right? Correct. Let's look um, one more time at Plans Exhibit 10. Do you see it? I do. What can you tell from this photo? Could you be more specific? Well, yeah, I mean, what we were just talking about, what does this tell us about the regularity with which uh, Reed parked his truck in this way? Um, I don't know if it tells us anything. Well, you see those black marks? I do, I just have no idea how or when they got there. Well, they lead to the spot that Reed was backing his truck up into, don't they? Object to the form. Um, I don't know whether Mr. Reed would park next to his home or in front of that vehicle that I see there. So I, I just, I don't know. So if I were to say, well, I suppose strike that. No, I, I'll keep it that way. If I were to say that Mr. Bates, this picture, Plans Exhibit 10, shows us that Reed regularly parked his truck in this way, would you disagree with me? Objective. I, would, I would have no basis to agree or disagree. I don't know how those black marks got there. Okay. Well, isn't it true that um, Evans sent an investigator out to the scene of this collision the day after it happened? Um, we had someone go out and take photos, correct? It was Custard Insurance Adjusters, right? I believe that's correct, yes. You see plaintiff's exhibit number 11 in front of you? I do. It says Custard Insurance Adjusters on the top right, doesn't it? It does. And then, when we scroll on the bottom, you can see the Bates numbers that, that suggest this is something Evans produced to me, right? I assume, I don't know what those Bates numbers mean, but I assume you're right. As a lawyer, you know what Bates numbers are. I do. All right, let's go back up to the top picture here in Plan 11, and this says, photo number nine, date taken 10-02-19, right? You read that correctly? The day after this collision, right? Correct. What do you see here in this little highlighted circle I just drew? Generally speaking, the same black marks that I saw in the aerial. Doesn't that tell you how he was parking? No. Okay. okay. Well, you could see these same black marks from uh, Google Maps, right? Is that where you took the aerial from? No, the area was taken by a uh, accident reconstruction expert. But my question was, um, you could see these same black marks from Google Maps, right? I can't recall the Google Map photo offhand. Well, do you see Planet Exhibit 12 in front of you? I do. You see those black marks? I do. And then if we look at Planet Exhibit 13, you can see them a little bit better, right? I do. Now, isn't it true that even after this collision, and even after Reed saw Mr. Jordan get airlifted to a hospital, and even after Evan sent an investigator to the scene of this collision the day after it to see what happened, Reed kept backing his tractor trailer across Temple Avenue, this highway? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, although I do know you wrote a letter to that effect. We'll get to my letter, thank you. Um, is your testimony that you don't know whether Reed kept backing across this road? That's my testimony, yes. Why don't you know that? Um, well, because I'm not physically there, so I don't know whether he 
did or did not follow my instructions. But I do know that I, I personally, so not anyone else, I personally spoke to him and let him know that he was not allowed to take um, trailing equipment to his residence any longer. But since he owns the truck, the tractor, um, I can't pre prevent him from taking his tractor there. But I did tell him to the extent he has trailing equipment that he is not to take that to his residence. All right, we'll get back to that too. So when you talked to Reed, didn't you ask him whether he'd kept backing across this road? I did not. Did you ask anyone at your company? I did not. I called Mr. Reed myself. When did you call? Uh, upon receiving your letter. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up my letter then, I guess, since we keep talking about it. I believe that it's going to be plaintiff's exhibit number 30. Yeah. All right. Do you see my letter in front of you? I do. Mark plaintiff's 30. I see it. The date on this letter is June 11, 2020, right? Correct. Is it your testimony that until then you did not know whether Reed was continuing to back his truck across Temple Avenue in this manner? Correct. Why did you wait until you heard from me to find out? Uh, I was more concerned about what happened on October the 1st than I was about what happened after the October the 1st. So if that uh, is an error, that is my error, my error alone, but I was more concerned about October 1, I was not as focused on future events. Okay. Well, let's look at some photographs that I'll, I'll represent to you were taken by Mr. Jordan's family and friends. Do you see Plans Exhibit 20 on the screen in, in front of you? I do. What does it show? It, to me, it shows Mr. Reed following my instructions. His vehicle, which he owns, is in his driveway without a trailer on it. I don't know what day this oh, is. Take October 9th, okay? But it looks to me like he's following instructions. Okay. I'll, I'll represent to you also that when you see these dates in the top right, that is, as you correctly assumed, the date the picture was shown, was taken, rather. Do you now see Plants Exhibit 21? I do. This date is 11.04.19, correct? Correct. What do you see here in Plans Exhibit 21? I see Mr. Reed's vehicle with trailing equipment attached to it. It's obviously backed into that same parking spot, isn't it? Correct. Do you see Plans Exhibit 23 on the screen in front of you? I do, although the portion you're showing me is just the sky. I'll scroll down in just a second. What's the date? January 31 of, uh, I think 2020. I got my uh, mic box right in front of the date. Okay. What do you see? Uh, Mr. Reed's vehicle with trailing equipment attached. It's obviously packed into that same spot, isn't it? Which means he did it successfully, I guess. It's obviously back to the same spot, isn't it? Successfully so, yes. Okay. Now, I inadvertently missed the date here. That was January 31, but there's a video that I'll show you. And the video I will represent to you comes from November 22 of 2019. Um, do you see the video screen in front of you? I do. All right, I'll hit play.
that video showed Reed back in the tractor trailer into that same spot, didn't it? I assume it was Reed, yeah. Okay. I will show you now what's been marked as Plants Exhibit 24. Do you see that? I do. And the date on this, let's see, it is the same. So this is the same date as Plants Exhibit 23. It says January 31, 2020, right? It does. And here we see the same truck back in the same spot with the trailer behind it, right? Correct. Do you see Plants Exhibit 25? I do. Dated March the 1st, 2020, right? I honestly don't see a date on it. Um, can you see my cursor or mouse in the top right? No, I, even if I minimize our, oh, there you go, thank you. Uh, yeah, March 1, 2020. And that shows the same truck back in the same spot, doesn't it? It does. You see plans exhibit 26. I do. That has a date on it of April 12, 2020, right? Correct. Shows the same truck and the trailer back in the same spot, right? It does. Do you see plans exhibit 27? I do. That's dated April 19, 2020, right? Correct. Shows the same truck back to the same spot, right? Correct. I'm showing you plans exhibit 28. Do you see that? I do. It's dated May the 5th, or excuse me, May 24th, 2020, right? Correct. There's the same truck back in the same spot, right? Correct. Okay. So where is Mr. Reed supposed to park or where does he park his trailer now? At the Allegiant Intermodal Yard. That was the instruction. Where is the Allegiant Intermodal Yard? Other than generally saying Atlanta, I, I don't know. Why could he not have parked his trailer at the Allegiant Intermodal Yard on October the 1st, 2019? He could have. Now, we've agreed, I think, that when this tractor trailer was backing across the highway on October 1, 2019, it was blocking both northbound lanes and the center lane, right? That's my understanding, yes. Were you aware it was also blocking the, the shoulder of the road, which would have been to the right of a northbound driver? Uh, I didn't see a shoulder in those photos, but I guess as a practical matter, it had to because it was partly in his driveway, correct? Yeah. Um, if an Evans driver were, were to come up to you tomorrow and say, Mr. Bates, I have a great idea. I'm gonna start backing my truck and trailer across multiple lanes of a US highway at night without a flagger or reflective triangles. What would you say? Objective for one. Uh, I would question him about a flag or triangles in light of my earlier answers, but I would advise him that I would prefer he made a different decision. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. All right. I don't have anything. All right. That's a wrap.